Hello and welcome back. So I'm so excited to meet with you all today and just really go over, uh, quickly go over chapter one. But before I get into chapter one, I did want to quickly drop another hidden gem. So there was essentially supposed to be four gem, oh, three hidden gems in the last video, but it looks like I only gave two. So I did want to add that third hidden gem and there will be another one in the middle of this uh, presentation. So uh, the next hidden gem is that you don't want to post the hidden gems until you watch all of the videos for the entire week. So this is going to be really important um, because like I said, sometimes in the weekly overview, I'll be dropping some hidden gems, but I might also be adding them in that um, chapter the lecture video. So the third hidden gem is that don't post the hidden gems until you watch all the videos for the week. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to lecture on chapter one, lesson two, but I want you to make sure that you read all of the sections and that you're making time to not just read all of the sections, but that you're taking time to take notes. So I don't want you to open up the textbook, even though it is a open uh, note quiz, but I don't want you to open up the textbook and pull up the pages during for the first time during an, a quiz because in 20 minutes, it's gonna be really hard for you to find all of those answers. Um, instead, I would want you to read the chapter, take notes, watch the lecture videos, take notes, and then recheck all of the information and all of the modules and take notes and then you can go back in and take the quiz. You have 20 minutes to complete the quiz. So having read ahead of time, taken plenty of notes, it's gonna be easier for you to get through those quizzes. Um, but all right, let's get into today's lecture. So before we really get into um, 1.2, I did wanna quickly just talk about what is communications. So take a moment and think about all of the different types of communication that you've encountered, how do you define communication? What does communication look like? So take a moment and think about that. So as a communication scholar, we have all done a ton of research on what is communication and we've all tried to figure out what the notion of communication is and what we've really um, all kind of settled and agreed upon is that communication is this diverse and complex process. And the key word here is really this process. It's a human activity that everyone recognizes. And some of the time or most of the time, we assume that it's really just talking to one another. But as we will see through the different communication models that I'm gonna talk about today, uh, it's much more than that. So it is a systemic process in which people interact with and through symbols to create and interpret meaning and is influenced by multiple contexts. So communication creates our reality. I wanna go back to that definition and really focus on symbols. And we think, we typically assume communication as just talking, but there's a lot more too than just the actual words that we say and the responses that we have for one, in, one another. Um, we are in constant communication. Uh, my hairstyle communicates my identity. My necklace communicates something about me. Everything that you see in the background really communicates something different. It makes it, it gives off information that then you can interpret and really decide what all that means. What is all, all of the symbols that I'm using to communicate my identity? What do those mean to you um, and to myself? So communication is not just, and we'll see very clearly the examples of this, but it's not just talking. Um, we have nonverbal, verbal, um, and really it goes back to those symbols. Um, so now that we've really talked quickly, I know very briefly about what communication is, I really wanna start connecting it to public speaking because it's not just getting up in front of an audience and seeing a bunch of words, but it's really this symbols that we are using to create. So as we're speaking and presenting, we're creating meaning, 
but there's also something else going on, right? Whoever is listening to us is interpreting and making meanings of those symbols that we are using. So we are gonna study communication and public speaking throughout the semester. Uh, but now let's talk about those communication modules. Um, so when we talk about communication models, the first module that we really look at is the linear model. And so the linear model is not public speaking. Uh, that means that in the linear model, we have one person who is giving the information. Um, so we have the source who delivering the message. That person is the source and the and the person is simply communicating a message out to a receiver or the audience and, you know, hoping that you just pick up some of that information and giving you all that information and hoping that you receive it, right? So there is just this one-way direction. So think about how I am communicating to you right now through this video. I am just giving you a ton of ton of information. I am the sender and you are the receiver, but it is really one way. I'm hoping that you understand the communication, but I don't really hear from you in this message at all. It's not an exchange. I'm not waiting, although I have my pauses and I ask a question and I do expect you to do some um, critical thinking, but there is no expectation of you responding to me. It's not an even exchange, but communication is still occurring. Um, so it moves from the source here to the receiver, um, back to the source, back to the receivers. So I have the message and I want you to get the message. You become the receptacle, receptacle and I'm just trying to deposit that information into you. So that is a linear model of communication. I just, I'm gonna give you information and you're just gonna accept it. There is no real um, exchange. That isn't public speaking. So that's really important to understand um, because we are expecting some kind of interaction when we are presenting in public. So when I am just giving you information and there's no response, whether it be verbal or nonverbal, um, then we aren't considering that public speaking. So the next model that I wanna talk to you about is the in interactional model. And sometimes, this could turn interactional. So this video can turn interactional in that, um, for instance, I am providing you all of this information. I am the source. You are the receiver. You receive this information and you're just like, I don't get it. I don't understand what is going on. What is this interaction model? What is she talking about? And so then you um, would, if, if you understood everything, you accepted all the information, you didn't communicate back to me, then we're at the linear model. But when you are confused or you want to just continue this conversation that we're having about interaction model and you reach out to me, you send me an email, you meet with me um, through, you send me a chat, then we have what happens as now you become the source and you and I the receiver. So now this changes, right? So um, we have this exchange. You are now, by sending me an email, by reaching out to me, you are sending me the message and I am now the receiver. Um, so it's very slow. And we wanna um, think about it as when we post a picture on Instagram, we can have that be linear. We send out a message and there's no action. No one likes it, no one comments it. We see it, but there's no feedback. Uh, whereas we post something, someone likes it, there's a message there. Someone makes a comment, there's a message there. So it's not just throwing information, but it is getting some of that feedback. So we have um, we have this interaction going on, but we're taking turns. It's not simultaneously occurring. It's um, we are sending each message one at a time. So that is what the interaction model um, 
is. So it's really just this give and take, but it's a lot slower than the transactional model. Now I wanna talk about this third model of communication, which is the transactional and um, which is transactional and it's really what we look at as um, communication scholars. So all the experts agree that public speaking is a transactional model of communication. And that is where you as the sender or the channel, you have the message and you give the message to your receiver. While you're giving the message to your receiver or your audience member, they are giving you feedback synchronously at the exact moment. So think about this. When have you ever been in a lecture in another classroom face-to-face -face, and they are giving a presentation and you are just bored out of your mind. You start rolling your eyes, you start yawning, you start flipping through that. All of that is our, it's communicating something. So you are consistently interacting with what is occurring live, right? So I may be the lecturer and I may be the one talking, but you're also simultaneously at the same time that I'm talking, you are communicating. You are also um, giving a message. So think about when you give a presentation, um, we have a lot of nonverbal. The audience tends to do a lot of nonverbal engagement. Um, but there also is, other than nonverbal, we have um, inner dialogue. So for instance, when we are engaging in presentations and you're providing all this new information, I am as a listener thinking, oh my God, I have to look that up. I am thinking about all the things that you're saying. And so I may be nodding my head and that is the feedback that you're receiving from me that I may be interested in what you're saying, um, that I may be excited about the topic that you're, that you are talking about. So transaction model, the receiving and the delivery is occurring at the same time. So as a person who is giving the message, so the source, your receivers are giving the messages back in real time. At the same time, you guys are engaged in this real time communication dance. It's just happening. Um, it's all happening at the same time. And even in this online public speaking course, like we are going to have to sit here and listen to presentations live. We're going to be as connected as we possibly can through a computer screen. So I'm going to be close and personal to your face. I can see what, uh, what some of those reactions are. I can see when you're looking down, when that screen gets extra bright because you've opened another uh, window. So I am able to see kind of everything that's going on. So we are, even though it's a synchronous class, even though we are gonna be presenting on Zoom, we are still going to be engaging in transactional, in the transactional mode of communication. So that's really, really beautiful. Um, so now that I, I don't wanna get too deep into um, Zoom, that's kind of, we'll talk about Zoom and how we're going to run our speech sessions during that Zoom, um, first Zoom meeting. I will also drop a lot of um, links for you to learn how to use Zoom, uh, but that's really for another video. Uh, lastly, um, this is it for our video today. Uh, go back through it, read it all, be careful. Read it all carefully uh, with a fine tune, take a fine tooth comb, take your quiz. Uh, but I will say, if you're having anxiety about technology aspect of Zoom, uh, we have a couple of weeks to really test it out. We're going to do a lot of practice um, and Zoom is really user friendly. So I do want to remind you that even though we are on Zoom, we are going to be able to um, have that a really engaging communication. So if you have any questions, go ahead and email me. And when we get, go back and forth 
And we can go back and forth <laughs> through that interactional model of communication, or you can set up an appointment with me and we can have some transactional communication um, via Zoom. And I hope you've learned a little bit about the basic principles of communication from this chapter. Um, and in this video, I look forward to hearing from you soon. And last but not least, the last hidden gem. So for today's last hidden gem, uh, it is going to be that you set up all your notifications on for this course. So make sure that your notifications are on and that you are getting all of the notifications, announcements, messages, um, and even just notifying when assignments are due, that's gonna be really important. So making sure that your the hidden gem number four is that your notifications are on for this class. All right, have a good one. I'll see you soon.